Hey guys, Coach Sue here with Physique Development and today I'm going to give you the five steps to start tracking your macros. If I go to a six step, don't call me out on it. We never know. So step number one is gonna be download a tracking app. I would highly recommend my fitness pal. It is, has the largest database for people who've already logged food in there. It's going to have a lot of things for when you scan the barcode, being able to get it in there easy and um, a little bit biased because it's the one I've always used so I know how to use it efficiently. Now a little side step, so this isn't an actual step, it doesn't count, is with when you download that app, it's gonna say, okay, how many calories do you want? And then it's going to break down your macros for you. What you want to do is you go to the desktop version, you set all of your goals to zero, and I'll pop it up on the screen kind of what my breakfast looked like when it's all zeroed out, where it shows negatives, and that's going to be a way that you can kind of sidestep not paying for it, or you can pay for the paid version and put everything in that you need. But step one is downloading the app. Step number two is tracking your food for one to two weeks without making any changes. We don't want to dive in. We don't want to run before we walk. We want to get in the habit of just tracking our food. Because if you're not used to tracking your food, trying to hit all these goals, you might feel like a failure and then you just give up. We wanna set you up for the most success here. So what you'll do is you'll be able to just track your food, get in the habit of tracking everything as you eat it and being able to put it in there. After that one or two weeks, what you'll do is you'll go back through your food logs and you will add up how many calories you had over that one to two weeks and then divide it by how many days you have. The main reason for this is we wanna get an average. Instead of having a thousand calories one day, 3000 calories the next, well, you're going to eat at 2000 calories or whatever that number is for you on average. And from that, we're going to gather feedback and be able to take the next steps needed. But as we step it with this process, it allows you to be set up for success. Like I said, get more comfortable with tracking as a whole, and then being able to take small steps, especially if you've never tracked before. You're like, what are my macros? What should I set them at? Being able to see what you're currently doing is going to give you the best guide for what you should be doing moving forward forward. Step number three, I believe that we are on is going to be once you already got that calorie goal, you're going to set up a protein goal for yourself. So after you've consistently hit that calorie goal, that was your average calories for that week or two, you're going to set up a protein goal. I would start over 80 grams. If you're a newbie, you might be only hitting 50 grams, 60 grams a day, but I would say most of you guys are over 80 pounds. And so you want to be having a minimum of 80 grams there. But if we're getting into some specifics, there's different training of thought as how much protein, but something super easy is going to be one pound per gram of body weight. Unless you are very overweight, then it's going to come down a little bit. So you're going to have next the goal of just hitting protein and a calorie goal. From that, the fifth step is going to be breaking that protein goal into each meal. So again, we're going off of those averages. Instead of trying to run before we walk, we go from, okay, my goal is hundred grams of protein a day. Let's say I'm consistently hitting that. Then we're going to go to okay, I wanna make sure I'm having a minimum of 20 grams of protein per meal. So we're gonna even out that protein distribution to set us up because if we are having, again, 70 grams in one meal, 10 grams in another, not only is that 10 grams not spiking muscle protein synthesis, but that 70 grams might be too much for you personally to digest the best. Now, there's no real limit per meal. It's gonna be all personal preference there. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of pay attention to how you feel, use that feedback and move forward. So these are five simple things that you can do starting off with macros if you're completely new you don't know what to do and from that you'll be able to kind of gauge okay do I gravitate more towards carbs or do I gravitate more towards fats where my fiber at those are all questions to ask after you've nailed down the consistency of those first five things and then you'll be able to take steps from there but keep an eye out for some more tips for macro counting and I'll talk to you guys next time if you find yourself traveling a lot or you're on the go, busy, can't always meal prep, or you just want to enjoy some of your favorite fast food restaurants still, I would highly suggest heading over to physiquedevelopment.com to look at any tips and tricks from us, but especially the fast food ebook that you can download for $5.